We live? No. Hey everybody, it's your boy Chris. Welcome back to the Off Air Podcast, episode 22, first episode of 2020, no, no first episode of a decade. Uh, oh, and as always, my boy John with me. Yeah. I just woke up out of a coma. What year is it? It's 2020. Oh shit. Yeah, it doesn't even sound real, does it? What? 2020. My vision ain't even that. We're 11 days in. Who are you? Uh, Anyways, guys, uh, (laughs) welcome back. I hope you guys had a fantastic break on, you know, hopefully you guys caught up with these episodes. Fantastic indeed. Of, uh, as of course, we uh, put out a movie, short film, actually, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, So, last month, um... Early, uh, yeah, early on last month, their short film uh, Blood Brothers. Um, pretty good reviews on it, um, and we actually had been selected for a short film or for for a film festival, film festival the Frostbite Fil- Film Festival over in Colorado. Uh, you know, we d- I didn't didn't win anything, but we were featured and uh, we we were proud to be selected, nonetheless. Um, aside from that, I mean, should I go first or do you want to go first? How, how do you want to do this? To, today on this you know what new decade you start off the podcast oh i appreciate that man well we have some pretty interesting news coming in from uh ces um some the latest and some innovations from some of the biggest tech companies in the world uh, a lot of which having to do with ai and with technology becoming more and more seamless we're dealing more with foldable tech stuff i, I know before we get too deep I want to talk about the insane new logo for PlayStation. Still the same. Um, it's everyone's like, "Oh my god, new logo!" Uh, eh. Did I see that? I honestly didn't even notice. No, it's, there's no difference. I'm gonna look it up. Is liter- is I'm gonna it, pull it up right now. It's like the PS3 logo, but except the three, it's now. It's a, five. a four. Oh, it's a five. Uh, it's five. It's a five. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, yeah. Everyone keeps forgetting four exists. I mean, everyone plays on it anyway. Uh, I don't even know it. It's it's oh it's the yeah yeah I, I it, why is were people actually were people actually talking about this yeah apparently that was a main talking point other I mean I I heard people were talking about the um the the leak prototype uh, yeah yeah the, the prototype and and how that looks and all which I mean historically the prototype looks nothing like the actual console when it comes out but a lot of people keep forgetting that that prototype is actually the uh, dev kit. Yeah, right. The, the dev kits is what, is what I mean. Yeah, early like, dev kits it, always change. Yeah, no. It's, historically, like especially especially with PlayStation, the final console looks nothing like the dev kit. Yeah, I mean the PS One and PS Two dev kits look like DVRs. <laughs> they look like ColecoVisions. That and um, I believe rather uh, they, they rather they look like uh, not ColecoVision. The that and plus the Sony Nintendo uh. They look like CDIs. That's what I'm trying to remember. C- they look like CDIs. Oh yeah, Philip CDI. <laughs> Jesus. We don't talk about that. Who? Yeah, but but you were saying. Um, either that or the original prototype for uh, PlayStation's well, Sony, the Sony Nintendo console, mm-hmm. where they're basically both you can play both Nintendo games and uh movies. Mm-hmm. But then Sony's like, fuck it, we'll make our own company. Did we talk about the specs that were, that were predicted for, for the PS5? Then, if we, I, I, I feel like we did, but I'm not sure. I, I feel we glanced on it, but it may have changed since then. I see, like that's old news, man. I mean, that, that's 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 uh, that's from a decade ago. Fuck off. <laughs> you know, fuck you. <laughs> I'm not wrong. You're right, but fuck off. Let's well, just project it real quick. My whole because... life just happened last decade. <laughs> uh, two decades ago. Uh, uh-huh. de- <clears throat> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, well, okay, so, so as far as confirmation, um, the CPU is based on AMD Ryzen 8 core. GPU is a custom Radeon. And you know, they're working pretty closely on, on AMD in this one, similar to how they did it on, on the PS4 Pro. Um, no, you good? good. <laughs> um, we don't know for sure as far as the amount of memory your storage is going to be, but it's likely going to be big. I mean, the the PS4 Pro, um, more likely is going to start in the terabytes. For mem, well, for for storage, it, it'll likely be in terabytes. Yeah, but uh, memory probably I don't know, sixteen gigs. Where we we can expect at 16, least sixteen. Probably I mean, the, the, the PS4 Pro was eight gigs. Probably sixteen. A little bit over actually. 
and then their professional version of the PS5 is probably going to be 32. That'd be huge. We're talking about a PC right now. I mean, I mean that, that was the same thing that that's been going on with the latest Xbox. Except the PCs are now up in the 64 range. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, there, there's there's even bigger numbers in PCs. We talked about Actually, that before. Actually, no, it's 128 last time I checked. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, we, we were talking about... Uh, you, you can render to the fucking dust on the moon. I <laughs> uh, uh, a few episodes ago, we were talking about... Um, the latest CPUs, the, the the latest Threadripper CPUs coming from coming from AMD back in November, um, of having up to 128 cores on some of these massive CPUs, um, but uh, yeah, with the PS5, um, expecting some pretty high specs on it. In fact, they were talking about, I don't know about what these specs. Maybe if we learn more about memory and storage later on, but they were talking about how it'll be able to render at 4K at 120 hertz. Which is absolutely insane. I mean, there aren't even there's there aren't too many games that will even be developed at that standard. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe you know come this new decade, but I mean, for twenty twenty one, yeah, that's, um, that's huge. <laughs> but four K at one hundred and twenty is huge. But from what we've heard so far from the actual developing, well, from the actual companies that make the games, mm-hmm. they're actually leaning more towards PlayStation at this point. There, because some of them are actually coming out sl- saying we're kind of disappointed what we're seeing in next generation Xbox. Xbox, I don't even know what to call it. The uh, Project Scarlet. To be honest, I w- Scarlet sounds better. Right, rather than, rather than a, an Xbox, and it's not a traditional Xbox. To be honest, no, because they co- first when it co- announces like Xbox Series X. And then they're like, no, that's not the name. It's well, just Xbox. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm like, th- then what's the first one? Microsoft hasn't really been creative with the names of their consoles. I mean, the the, the last one was called the Xbox One. And then One X. Yeah. They're, they're, they and have, then now this one's Series X, but they're like, no, it's not. It's just the Xbox. And the, then we're like, what the fuck? Yeah, so I, they, they haven't really exactly been creative with names but that's that's besides the point i mean with, with, in terms of uh, when, we're, when we're talking about you know the actual value and performance of these consoles and now how kind of the line is being blurred between console and pc nowadays pc is now a modular console it's which which is which has which has always been like the preference for pc gaming is how modular it is the way that, you know you, you being able to build out your own machine and having more options in, ter- in terms of gaming between the massive libraries and the massive free mods, uh, the, you know the one the one big thing that I always uh, bring up when everyone's asking me why I don't play console is because I have the option to go back in my library and play games from years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah, and 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 the past has been more difficult to play. You know, older games because a, a, a lot of. Uh, Backwards compatibility has been a difficult thing in, in the in the past several years with consoles, which has never been a problem with PC. Um, whereas with consoles, if you want to play a really old game, you need to bring out the old console, or you need an emulator, and then you're playing on a PC or a different device anyway, you know, entirely. Which, on the other hand, I mean, you know, with, with game collectors, people would do prefer to be able to just play completely in that vintage style that's feel that sounds so weird saying vintage calling like an n64 vintage but <laughs> um that's that's the thing is is uh it's, it's almost like antiquing has now come to video games considering how long the industry's been around i mean yeah um what else uh playstation 5 well sony announced playstation 5 would be compatible all the way down to ps Three. Yeah, they're saying they're they're definitely trying to sell backwards compatibility with with the new PlayStation for sure. That and they plan on keeping the PS4 around for the next few years, uh, at, at least for, at least for another uh, for another year or two. Uh, they plan on putting out a few more games that will go straight to PS4 and PS4 Pro, um, along with PS5. So um, it, it's not a bad investment to get a PS4 or better yet a PS4 Pro in 2020. Um, maybe in 2023 it it'll be like an antique, but <laughs> um yeah uh, as, as far as uh where the ps5 lies with the ps4 um a few well here, here's another thing there's another idea too is that uh the ps5 is it can it can easily just become uh i mean it will be but it, it, it can it can be a flagship for sony in terms of gaming and the ps4 can be their budget console for a little while in fact that's that's probably what's gonna feel like right because they're saying that they're gonna keep the ps4 a little uh, bit longer a, alongside the PS5, almost like how 
you can buy the latest iPhone or the cheaper version it was last year's iPhone or the equivalent, you know, because in terms they, of specs. They did that with the PS3 because uh, once the PS4 dropped, I believe they supported the production for, I think, four, three years in. Yeah, the PS4. yeah. It, it, it was surprisingly longer. I think I think they want to keep that around considering, uh, you know, creating more options for the consumer. Um, but uh, a few quick key facts on, on the PS5. So, um, uh, yeah, it will be the next-gen console. Um and uh, so it's it's said to release actually this holiday season between October and December of 2020. It's actually sooner than I expected. Um, mm. And I mean, so and that was a problem with with the PS4 too is, is that they were kind of slow on production when they were first put out. However, in terms of the specs and build quality of, of their product, they delivered. So that's one thing that Sony doesn't compromise on. Well, what I think is uh, what Sony did this time is they actually delayed the announcement, mm -hmm. and then. They want to make sure they had it down to the to the actual chip they yeah. they put in. Once so, they, yeah. they had it confirmed, that's when they announce it. Yeah. So they can amass a large production supply ahead of time. Because uh -huh. every time a console comes out for a first time, what's the big thing that everyone remembers? No consoles available. Yeah. Also, another thing that people realize it, it, or people are starting to realize, including me, um, the PS4 came back came out back in 2013. It's been around for a long time, way long time. So we've actually been waiting quite some time for a uh, for for a new console, like two three years late here. Um, so could could possibly you know not be expecting any, any compromises. Hopefully, um, so aside from that, uh, what we're saying. So PS so PS PS five is also going to support VR, of course. Um, and uh, t they're t talking about, uh, so, so apparently there's been rumors about, about a PSVR 2 that they're going to be also updating the, uh, the, the VR com compatible console. Hmm. Um, I assume PS5 will, will be backwards compatible with, with, with the current PSVR as well, considering that it's, back, it's, it's been backwards compatible with the games. Um, Sony has also mentioned that they're going to keep on putting out, um, hard copies of their games. Something that, uh, has been some talk about you know, um, doing away with, with hard copies of, of games entirely. A, a lot of gaming companies are leaning towards digital download and eventually streaming. cloud, yeah, eventually streaming and cloud gaming is, is a potential future. Um, pers personally, I, I can give you guys a couple reasons why I prefer hard copy, even though I, mean, I play I, on, even though I play on PC yeah. and I don't, uh, -huh. uh, one of the major reason is you use up a, a lot of space if you download. Oh, absolutely. That's the one thing that goes out first. Yeah. However, at the same time, I mean, hard copies take up a lot of space, and that's they, and that space that would be taken up by a more efficient uh, hard drive eventually, right? To store all your games at the same time. So there, or, there's a give and take there. I don't know. Yeah, th there's a lot of pros and cons. Yeah, you can go hand in hand with it. I can I can easily see hard copies of games becoming a thing, that's somewhat like vinyl or CDs that people buy if they really want to have the tangible thing that's why we'll still have collector's editions and pre-order editions and stuff like that um um not to say that like you necessarily need the disc of the game but like you know eventually that'll become something that people will get for again vintage purposes for the sake of collecting antiquing that's that's a thing that's that I, it's on the horizon for gaming as uh, as unreal as it seems i'm gonna be honest you know what everything's gonna be on cloud soon enough speak about vintage collecting you know what i'm actually hunting down right now huh. the original dead rising 2 zombrex edition wow i've been hunting that for a bit you know what that brings mm. it brings a map of the game and then in like an actual cop like well a physical version of their end game drug mm. ba basically i i like collecting all, some stuff even though i don't have the room in my room anymore oh <laughs> yeah. uh, i'm gonna be honest my grand theft auto 5 ps3 collector's edition is still in its box wow what i still have the deposit bag with its deposit key and then the los santos hat Still in this uh, case. Are you just buying stuff and not touching it? Oh, well, that and plus I don't have the room. And plus, it's really it was really expensive for me. Yeah. <laughs> back then. <clears throat> wow. That was like one hundred and six dollars. Damn. That's yeah. <laughs> back back when I was in high school. 
Yeah. Yeah, that paid with that my own no, money. I, no, yeah, that's that's something. Um, so I was gonna talk about CES. Okay. Yeah, we got a little bit sidetracked. No, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, uh, it, it's it's good though that we actually talk talk about that real quick with the, with the PS5. I mean, we're we're late on that. And that and there's been you know some a little bit more recent news on that. But uh, with CES, most most of the stuff is talking about. Uh, um, again, like th- this is what uh, Google and Apple want. This is what Tesla wants. Is that tech tech is slowly becoming more and more integrated to the point it's going to be seamless within our lives. Uh, as well as uh, there's going to be a big player that this decade with with, uh, with AI and how it's going to influence, especially with the release of five G in these coming years. Um, but you talk about well, I mean, if 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 we, if we need to talk about five G, we'll we'll get to that. But uh, one of the big things that people have been talking about from CES was Toyota City of the Future. So Toyota City of the Future has no human drivers. <clears throat> All automated driving is an expected future, not only from Elon Musk but also by Toyota. And this idea is being carried significantly amongst different car companies. Um, that people are not going to stop buying cars, but people are going to stop driving them eventually. How do you feel about that? Let's, let's talk about that real quick. You're a, you're a car guy, John. You like cars. You, you you play the crew too. You're about it. You I, like you like driving. You like the practice of being behind a vehicle and feeling the machine and how it purrs. Being I, being in control. I've I've had as something that is not autonomous. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> please, Lee, please let me speak. <laughs> uh. I I've, I've given this a thought. Yeah. Um, because we're slowly moving towards electric vehicles. Oh, absolutely. So, soon, soon. Uh, gas engine vehicles are going to be collectors' items. Yeah, I mean, renewable energy is inevitable. That and then soon, a license is going to be basically a thing of the past. The only the possibly, only, possibly. The only thing you you'll need from a DMV is just an ID. Yeah. Unless, I mean, they, they could say that you need a license to purchase a car or to rent a car. More likely that. There could be some sort of certification for that, but yeah. That, More that, likely it's just going to be an idea at that point. But yeah, but yeah, that's a conversation that less less people, who knows, the next generation might not commonly know how to drive. Just like how this new generation is, say, I don't know, writing less, right? You know, learning, less people learning, learning how to write in cursive, that's a small thing, but like... Let's be warning how to drive. That's huge. I was, I was the one guy that missed that one day in school that taught what? cursive. Day? A- apparently, it was a day for us. I, I had like a whole they, quarter they on that. They showed it once. The, the one day I was gone, I remember. I, I remember everyone I, could write cursive. I remember I had a book that where I practiced in. Uh, no, I can only do cursive in my name. What? That's it. No, you had to learn the alphabet. You had to learn the no. alphabet in cursive. You had to do it several times. No. And then you had to write a paper in it. Mm-mm. Really? No. At this point, I'm gonna have to go to the kids. Store. I forgot you. I forgot that you like transferred schools back and forth back in the day, back in the day, didn't you? And I, remember, was, I feel like you told me no. In middle school, you it did. was middle school. Yeah. A, a, a little. Uh, it was. It was barely elementary because I came back up to, up to up here. Yeah. Back in I want to say second grade. Yeah. But that's not the point. Um. Driving. Driving. And what? And how? And, and, how and why? Less people are gonna be doing it. A lot of people, less people are going to be doing it, and also like how few people know how to do manual driving. Oh, that yeah, manual driving is, is has become a niche skill. At, at this today. point, at really this point, I really want to learn it. A lot of people are going to say, "Why? Why not? Why not?" Because what if you want to drive a manual car? A lot there. Are, There's a lot, a of, lot of people. A lot of people prefer to drive manual, especially for There's performance. There's some benefits, of course. A uh, longer uh, transmission yeah. life. Yeah, you know why not? Longer transmission life. Uh, you also have control more of the engine. Mm-hmm. But other than that, um, there's a lot of features of the car that are soon to be thing of the past. Hell, if reinflating your tire, that's gonna be a thing of the past. Yeah, I can see. So. I- here's what i here's here's my prediction right self-driving and autonomous cars completely autonomous cars are, are probably going to be they're probably they're probably gonna be going to become a, a very common option right um in fact it, i could easily see it taking over completely for commuters people who are, who are driving in urban places possibly even in rural places if, if it's you know people can use it for traveling 
Um, um but I could also see, you know, you know, I can see non-autonomous or dumb cars to remain an option for performance and for and for car enthusiasts. Just because I feel like uh, cars, it's it's such a such a massive uh, interest. Like I, I, it's, I don't, I don't, I'm not even one to call it a, a niche. I mean, I, I would say. Not not everyone is into cars, but a lot of people were into cars, and it's not just sports cars. It's not just trucks. Everyone has their own thing that that, that they prefer. Um, but a lot of people still like to drive, and a lot of people like to go out and do go to drag races. A lot a lot of people. Are, I mean, are, I'm not. I'm not uh, saying there, there, there's a lot in the cult col- in the car culture that I think is going to become more and more niche, and uh, to where near nearly if not all driving cars you know non-self-driving cars right will be for those people but I'm, I'm not saying that it's car uh gas engine or like actual driving is gonna be outlawed at that point what yeah I'm, no i don't think so but one of the points i'm gonna bring up is in order to get this idea fully rolling mm-hmm. you have to make a way for those autonomous vehicles to only drive with autonomous vehicles mm-hmm because there's always going to be a big issues of human error. Well, yeah, I mean that that's the whole thing is with AI. I mean, have, have you heard about? I'm pretty sure we talked about this before. Is, is how? Uh, in fact, I, in fact, I think we talked about this either in the last episode or the one previous when we were talking about the Cybertruck and how Tesla's self-driving actually works. Um, is how th- these self-driving cars that that we have right now and that, that you know that that Tesla is still working on to have complete autonomous. Um, it's Technically, still not complete autonomous. No, and that it requires some sort of human interaction to make sure that the to make sure that the passenger is safe. Basically, you can't be sleeping in your car. Essentially, how the vehicle works is, it, it the whole vehicle has cameras around itself, mm-hmm. not very visible, but when you're driving, it's constantly gra- gathering information. It's constantly learning. Yeah, it's an AI. So, the only time. It screws up is when you show it to screw up. Mm-hmm. So it'll take information from car A, transfer to car B, and car B, that driver drives completely safe. Yeah. It'll separate the errors, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. With all the, these new vehicles coming out, yeah, the AI learns faster, mm-hmm. teaching itself and teaching others. Yeah. But, of course, it's still not 100% perfect. Right. Well, let's talk about this thing real quick what, that that Toyota put out uh, at, at C at CIS. Uh, or, or, yeah, at, at C- you know what it is. <laughs> no. Uh, so what the? Okay. Um. So it's called. They're calling it the Woven City, and this is actually something that that they're working on building uh, near Mount Fuji in Japan. Uh, in fact, there's a beautiful landscape here. So. By far the most ambitious thing unveiled at CES 2020 was Toyota's Woven City, a prototype community of the future that will be that will be built near Mount Fuji in Japan. The 175-acre plot of land where Toyota built where, where Toyota will build this planned community is the site of a now defunct manufacturing plant. On this land, Toyota will create an experimental laboratory of function of future technologies including self-driving vehicles run on hydrogen fuel cells, robots, smart homes, and new forms of personal mobility. We assume uh, that means things like uh, like the Wello, also unveiled at CES. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, there will be no human driving vehicles in the Woven City because the heart of Toyota's concept is that today's cities are built around cars and it wants it wants to imagine a city that's built for sustainable forms of transportation. Perhaps the coolest part of this experiment is that regular people will be able to, to take to take up residence in the woven city. This sounds like this sounds a lot like Walt Disney's original idea for Disney World's Epcot, which stands for Experimental Prototype City of Tomorrow. If the woven city takes off, look for other com- uh, companies and communities to replicate the idea. You know what's something. Facebook was talking about actually building their own small city with a lot of the same ideas. Maybe not with self-driving, but a lot. So th- this is th- this, did, this, did this entire also... idea is that uh, a lot of big tech and some even car companies are talking about how, well, 
eventually we're gonna run up we're gonna run out of petroleum right and sustainable energy is inevitable so we're the the idea is that all all large cities whether it's in america or in japan or china or the uk wherever um all of our big cities are built around cars are built around traffic the way the way our blocks are built the way that we have parking everything is built around the fact that people drive cars right not built around the idea of a sustainable future that we that is inevitable that we have to you know have sustainable energy otherwise it's the end of civilization that and um with uh elon musk uh the boring company that's mm-hmm. why he he thought of the idea of underground tunnels underground tunnels because mm-hmm. he's like how can i get from here from la down to venice beach yeah, well, th- that's the other idea too. Is that um, th- the idea to, in uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about this too on on Joe Rogan's podcast that um, in order imp- in order to improve traffic and improve uh, the um, infrastructure and growth of civilization is to grow is, is to build in three dimensions rather than two dimensions. Right. So instead of opening more lanes and widening roads, we need to build vertically and build tunnels and bridges um, and overpasses, which we've already been doing with building overpasses, but building tunnels. And you can, you almost has talked about this. You, you can dig thousands and thousands of feet down and, and build more and more tunnels into in, in, order, in order to improve traffic but um uh but yeah with the whole self-driving thing and and this whole idea of a of a of, uh, of an automated city because this isn't this isn't just self-driving and sustainable vehicles that toyota's talking about they're talking about robots and smart homes and personal mobility um you know in uh, public tr- transportation this is this is talking about the idea of how we're going to have to essentially rebuild the major cities of the world and how civilization is going to, con- is, is going to continue, um, you know, uh, and how, again, technology is becoming more and more seamless and AI is becoming a bigger and bigger player in society. The world is changing, John. We're, we're moving towards a very Star Trek-like future. Or everything is assisted. You can't do anything yourself anymore unless you try. It's going to be hipster to, you know, do anything by yourself. I'm, I'm thinking of more of the militia man where it's like, all right. <laughs> he, he doesn't know about the clam. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so he just goes up to the machine, starts cursing, prints out all those receipts. Like, great, not going to wipe my ass. <laughs> Um, but no, this is crazy, man. That the, the fact that Toyota is, is going is actually uh, funding and going by the building of this city and this, this this whole thing, and that it can be a real thing. This can be a real city that people can move into. <clears throat> and, uh, and, as of course, and Facebook and Apple have been talking about doing the same thing about building. And Huawei has been talking about this too about about building because Huawei, yeah, because uh, Huawei uh, already has a massive campus bigger than that of Apple and Google combined. Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to bring it up to you. Uh, I swear. There's a company over in China that's been planning to make a mega city. Oh, China in general wants to make a mega. City. I mean, I remember this is China we're talking about. Being uh, consi- yeah. I mean, uh, their their biggest temp- their biggest tech companies are associated with Tencent, which is essentially directly associated with the w- with the government in their communist party. But we're not going to talk about politics on the show. That the idea is that yes, this another big thing is that China does want to build a mega city connecting. I believe it was Beijing, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong all, all into one massive 70 million population megacity. That would be absolutely massive. And that, that, that's like an Akira. That's, that's like a Blade Runner-like city. That's huge. Um, yeah, it, it's it's very – it's amazing how, how fast this technology is coming up. And it's only going to get faster. It's the craziest um, part of it. Of course, another thing I can compare to this whole shenanigans is uh, Watch Dogs 2. Yeah, um, they're like, oh yeah, we're updating San Francisco. It's gonna be modern. Yes, but there's always gonna be a downside to uh, being modern. Yeah, I mean, this is all very exciting, but it's also very expensive, and it's only going to be it's, it's only going to be more effective once five G is 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 uh is well and effective, um, and uh, and even then, it's gonna take a long time before five G becomes something like a standard. Yes, well, I mean, like right now, four G is the standard. Yeah, but I mean, by the time five G is a standard, and by the time it's you know well and stated in in tech, 
I mean, the possibilities are astronomical. We're talking about a possible, like, our own rendition of the Oasis from Ready Player One. Or I mean, I... Actually, have you heard about this? What? That uh, someone built a massive VR server. I'm not talking about VR chat. I'm talking about this guy is selling acres of virtual land. Wait, what? Millions why of dollars sound a pop. Familiar? Let's, 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 why let's see if I can pull familiar? it up. I swear there's a show based Maybe, off of this. No. Oh, Second Life? No. Show. Yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't get what I'm referencing. I, I don't. Uh sorta of online. Shut up. Alright, <laughs> you guys can join this game. Alright, once you're in, you can't leave. You know. Let's see if I can find this virtual no. Uh for, I don't know. Second Life Realtor makes one million. Is this what I'm talking? Is this what I'm looking for? I I know I know Second Life. There's a lot of money that you can make off of it. Yeah, but like we're t I'm talking about like like how uh five G is, is gonna is, is how five G is going to affect crypto when people are gonna be, you know, yeah, starting like an entire Second Life in in a, in a virtual reality server. I I don't know. I, I, I this this was something I was talking about in my film class ab mm. about about how. 5G is is going to create. It's not just going to you know end buffering. This this is this is something that that creates so much more uh possibilities and opportunities to expand in virtual reality and augmented reality in the internet. Um, the, the massive servers that people can run. Um, we we can literally like how you said render dust on the moon. I'm talking about we're, we're literally going to be able to render massive like eight thousands of acres of real estate building virtual cities that people can just put on a pair of goggles and go live in obviously i mean the, 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 there's there's going to be a line between what's tangible and, and and what's virtual and how it's going to affect you know our society and economy but and that's also you know very far down the line i mean here we all i was talking about self-driving cars and that are running on hydrogen fuel cells and running on electricity um, this is very much tomorrow when we're talking about man minus the flying cars. It's never gonna happen. Sorry guys, it's never. We're not gonna get flying cars. Um, not with that attitude. It doesn't make sense to make flying cars. They're really loud. It's basically just a helicopter. If you take a drone and make it really big, like a thousand pounds, your neighbors gonna hate you. It's not gonna be practical. Where the hell are you gonna park that thing anyway? Even if you put rocket thrusters on it, that only make you go forward, not up. I, I, I was gonna say your mother's <laughs> house, but your mother's a very nice woman. Uh, oh, thank you, John. <laughs> I, I was gonna say yeah. Well, I'm gonna park at your. Uh, no, never mind. She's a nice person. You know, true friends. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Anyways. Uh, and see, yes, we also have. Uh, are are you, 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 do you? Do you have something else? We can come back to this. This is a whole like massive discussion with, with CES. I mean, other than a massive wildfire, and I don't know. Oh, are we gonna talk about Australia? We're gonna have to talk about it. I mean, you're right. Uh, this is this is a pretty big thing going because on right e now. even it's... though we're looking for the future, we gotta focus on what's now. Of course. Let's talk about Australia. It's um. It's looking like hell down there, man. It's a shame. Um, what a lot of people don't realize this has has been going on for three months. It's yeah. It's 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 been it's been like this for for a while. It's only grown to be this massive. Uh, it's so massive that to the point where there's a rare rare form of weather that's popping up where uh, this this type of weather only forms in volcanoes where it gets there's enough smoke slash ash in the mm -hmm. air that it creates rain particles. Right. It starts raining because the air is so so condensed. And then. When it's raining, it actually causes more lightning. That lightning causes more fires, so right. it's a cycle. Yeah, it it uh, it, I mean, it seems it's, like it seems like a give and take with, with you know with precipitation. Obviously, that can help put out fires. But yeah, well, you, like you said, with the lightning, um, um this is this is do, do a, you, a crazy natural phenomenon that's that's going about in this country. Do you have what size uh area has been burned already? Ooh, uh, let's see. I know it's in a hectic years already. Um. Like just um, like amount of like land that's been burnt. Uh, 
Um, it, it's it's very insane because... How much of it is on fire? How much of it is burning? Um, Australia burned areas. Uh, Australia has been... It's always been a hot uh, country. Uh, most of it's... I know some areas, it's very... Basically, the outback is almost desert in a way. Destroyed more than a thousand homes already. Um, but Appro- So, uh, uh, as of January 7th, approximately... 32,400 square miles. Yeah. Um, so far, one of the, the current biggest fire is probably bigger than Belgium. Mm. That's how fast it's burning. They're barely able to contain it. To put it in perspective, uh, with the California fires, California has, has had 505. And... Australia is a whopping 32,432 square miles as of just a few days ago. I mean, this is, this is a continent on fire. Amazon rainforests, fires, it, it, we're it's at so, 27,265. So far, it's actually outshadowing the Amazon fires. No, it is bigger than the Amazon fires by, um, by a, few, that, a, a few thousand short of 10,000. Yeah. Um, a lot of people... I'm wondering why was this happening. Mm-hmm. Well, one, it's both climate change, and two, it's also in a way political. It's a massive lack of action. I mean, I mean, of, of course, the firefighters are, are are working around the clock. About first they're, responders they're, are working are working around the around the clock. People are busting their asses you, to, you keep, know, to keep that place safe. But there is one good news from this. Ah. Huh. Uh, recently, I just found out California National Forest Rangers just arrived in uh, Australia. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, the guys who always run during the wildfires during California season, mm-hmm. during the summer season, they finally arrived down in Australia to help relieve some of the fires as well. Because at this point, we're using both Navy. Well, Australia's using both Navy, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. local, right. reserve, and basically actual people are just trying to protect their homes yep um everyone's doing something you have to at this point i mean 30 percent of the areas that have been burned is basically uh koala habitats kangaroo island yeah is technically technically it's been devastated there's nothing there right i have this uh article about uh see Ab- aboriginals war and fire show deep problems in australia Br- uh before britain started sending Convicts to the continent in the 1700s, Aboriginal Australians used fire to manage brushlands and forests across the continent. Noel Butler, who's known even the fire crews um, at the end of this road, I can barely, I can't, I can barely read this, um, wrote uh, Uncle Noel and his wife Trish used to run the, no, I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, Aboriginal culture um, an educational cam- uh, camp deep in the forest in the state of New South Wales. But as of last week, an inferno swept through their canyon. That's, wh- that's, what left- that's what's left of our house, Butler says, pointing at-, at a pile of charred timber, ash, and twisted sheet metal. Uh, so far, about 26 people have died from as a result of the fires. Uh, Nearly 3,000 people lost their homes um the amount of wildlife that's been dying as a result is very um is very hard to track at this point because Mm -hmm. it's now past i want to say a million animals Mm -hmm. um all the local hospital animal hospitals sanctuaries zoos are working overtime Mm -hmm. including the famous uh irwin australian zoo yep um see everyone's family see yeah you can see them. They're constantly working overtime. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's hands on deck. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm kind of getting choked up again. <clears throat> and and the, uh, this other guy, uh, but we're at burying kangaroos and wallabies that were killed in the blaze. But he's seen one large kangaroo still alive on the tracks of some wallabies. A few birds have returned, but there's no food for them. So Butler is putting out hay for the kangaroos and chicken feed for the wallabies. It's nuts. Um, but it's, it's there, there are amazing videos from the actual, uh, 
uh, what's it called the the planes mm-hmm. that dump the water over. Mm-hmm. They have bigger balls than the California uh, pilots. <laughs> There's actually yeah. one where it was literally feet away from hitting a beach, and got up and then just dump water. That's crazy. Yeah, um, we we've been posting a, about this whole thing um on our Instagram stories. Uh, and I just finished donating through uh, the Tony Hawk Foundation. Mm-hmm. So, uh, basically, half the money goes straight to the firefighters. Mm-hmm. Half of them goes straight to the uh, animal sanctuaries. Mm-hmm. Um, and whatever they can, they'll spare it to the people. Mm-hmm. But other than that, um, it's they're, they're, they just started summer season not too long ago. Yeah. So they're, um, they're estimating it's going to be another three months of this probably getting worse. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, we'll, we'll leave a link for the Tony Hawk Foundation in the description if you, if you guys want to donate. Um, definitely check it out. Or at least rate, rate up on this stuff because this is, this is huge. This is some of the biggest news of, of the year so far. We're going to be talking about this for some time. Um, huge. What else? What else? Yeah, basically a lot of celebrities, especially the famous Australian ones, have been uh, talking about them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all down to this response has been way too slow. Uh, yeah. It's everyone knows it. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Um, and a, a lot of people is like, oh, because I'm a, I'm a I'm a skim across it. I'm not gonna get too political. Mm-hmm. But uh, so far the prime minister is like, this is not climate change. This is just a regular fire season. Mm-hmm. No, because he's the one that has denied that. Yes, they're, we're, they're helping how every country in the world has pledged to reduce their carbon emissions. Mm-hmm. Half of the industry of carbon is coming out of Australia because it's all coal. Wow. Basically, they they still use coal fire plants. That's crazy. So, of course, they're, they're the one country that's probably, I want to say, fourth place of putting out the most carbon. Oh, shit. Um... It's, it's, it's very, it's, it's very shocking that it's like, all right, we're going to help you. Not that much. That's crazy. It's, it's, it's absolutely insane. Um, how, 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 how this, how this entire event has, has been going about. Um, yeah, this, this is far from any sort of normal season, far from any sort of, Everyone, everyone keeps t- t- typical yearly natural phenomenon. I mean, this is the last time it got there. There are people being killed. There's wildlife being killed. There's, there's actual whole habitats that have to be recovered, yeah, which is going to be being a while. destroyed. It's it's out of control. Essentially, it all chalks up to human preventable climate change. Mm-hmm. Um, before we change off of Australia, I want to say the average temperature across the entire country has been a steady 105 Fahrenheit. Damn. And it's been slowly rising because of the fires. I'd imagine. It's crazy. Um, Of course, New Zealand's also feeling the effects off, yep. off of Australia because true. of all the smoke. Our neighbors. Um, And of course, ISS has been constantly taking photos of Australia. Mm-hmm. It's you can see the smoke from the from space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's let's move on to uh, something a little bit more lighthearted. Slightly, not really. Oh, okay. Uh, Puerto Rico. Ah, Puerto. It's, it's, it's not. It's not very much more lighthearted. But no, you're right. Uh, let's let's glance. Well, not glance, but uh, Puerto Rico has experienced three major earthquakes within the week. Mm-hmm. On Monday, they experienced a 5.4. Tuesday morning, they experienced a 6.2. Uh, 6.4. 6.4. Yeah, and then today. Yeah, magnitude 6.4 uh, affected countries, the Bahamas, uh, British Virgin Islands, Dominica, Dominican Republic, St. Martin, uh, St. Martin, um, Guadalupe, Haiti, uh, Maserat, Puerto Rico, St. Kitts, Nevis, Turks and Caicos Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, Caribbean Netherlands, St. Bartholomew, um, Antigua, Bermuda, and Anguilla. 
and of course uh this a, a significant amount of the caribbean is, is, is being pretty much all but jamaica and cuba is is, is feeling th- is feeling this earthquake cuba well the only time cuba felt an earthquake was during the haiti earthquakes yeah oh yeah that was back in what 2010 2011 no i think that was earlier was it actually no no i don't, uh, I don't think so I it was the early 2000s 2010s i mean yeah but um, um but yeah and then not just probably i want to say three hours ago now mm-hmm. the experience of 5.9 yep uh just just about an hour ago yeah, an, well, or rather two hours ago yeah uh most of the island again is devastated because well one most of the buildings are made out of concrete mm-hmm. they're not meant for earthquakes nope uh, a lot of people are asking how come they don't plan for that well one it's earthquakes are super rare for them it's it's not it hasn't really historically been too common for puerto rico that is uh, to be hit by earthquakes two, the only reason why they make it concrete is because of hurricanes mm-hmm. uh florida has a standard as well mm-hmm. whereas like everything has to be all the walls in the building have to make well outer walls have to be concrete yeah uh and it's, it's very similar re- regulation in puerto rico considering that they, they've had much more de- devastation from hurricanes than they've ever had from earthquakes up to this point that is yeah yeah so that's huge yeah 5.9 aftershock was early was going on earlier this morning yeah including one on tuesday that was that was the biggest in the century so that six point nine was uh, the six point four was was the biggest quake in the century. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, let's let's move on to a little bit more lighter heart. Or do we want to go back to C- to CES? Let's let's move on to Netflix. Okay. Uh, unless you want to finish. I'm, I'm going to keep on bringing up CES until we go back to it. But uh, you know, fine. Let's go back to CES. All right. New sensors are coming to upgrade your health. Um. Let's talk about some uh, some new some new sensors and, and these uh, new uh, new smartwatch the, the with things scan watch and its app um, which looks for signs of sleep apnea oh yeah uh, more health sensor more health sensors are coming to customer products or consumer products uh, along with the apps and software to help you to help you read them so that you can better understand your body and the state of your health. The level of understanding we can get from today's consumer health products w- would have would have cost thousands of dollars, and an appointment as a hospital just five years wow well, yeah just five years ago would have cost thousands of dollars just, just to get um, well sleep patterns, <laughs> and 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 now you can just pick up a watch about 100, 150 bucks and get a free app. Uh, and it was clear at CS twenty twenty that health companies continue to push this f- forward at rapid pace. There, uh, there was the Within Scan Watch, which now includes an electro diagram, or an electro electro car diagram. Fo- these are really big words. Photo, photosmog. I what? Photopolethismograph. Po- photo I can't. Yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, for optical heart rate, okay. That, that, see, that I should have just said that. <laughs> SpO2 for blood oxygen and deeper sleep analysis that can detect sleep apnea. Uh, there was the GOPI 3, which can automatically track calorie intake. What? Directly track your caloric intake? Damn. I.e., the number of calories your body actually absorbs, of course. Um, not it's, you don't always uh, you don't fully absorb the amount of calories that, that you eat. Some of it is stored. Health nut. And can and it, can, it can detect your stress levels based on your skin readings using similar technology to what's used in lie detector tests. Mm. Lie detector tests are, are have been myth busted several times. Yeah. However. I can understand for stress only because of body temperature and heart rate. Well, yeah, because your body temperature and heart rate always changes due to your mood as well. Yeah, you can't really 
it, it, it's it. it's extremely difficult to control that and fake for that. A, very for a person who's very anxious always all, all the time you look like a liar well yeah according to that test yeah yeah, yeah. but it, it, it considering that they're using that for what it actually works on stress that makes sense there was also the uh the, the valentel's blood pressure sensing earbuds okay hmm. which could be used which oh well which can be used to help flight, which can be used to help fight hypertension, the world's most widespread undiagnosed condition. Uh, there were all, there were products to measure blood sugar and smart glasses to help people with dyslexia. While those products still have work to do, I, I'd imagine this this all sounds very complex. Um, it's great to see companies dedicating energy and resources to, to tackle these issues, and we have to and we have to expect that there. are that they're laying groundwork for future products. Uh, a decade or two from now, we'll likely look back and be baffled by the ways that we used to make so many decisions about our health without having data to understand what was actually happening. This has the potential to become a demo- um, democratizing force in healthcare. Yeah, I think this is great. Um, this is all highly advanced. Um, the only thing that I can see being useful within the next year or so, um, probably the sleep detection. Um, yeah. What with you know with what uh, with blood ox- with the blood oxygen and, and sleep analysis, we've already been able to, to um, track uh, sleeping patterns. Um, sleep pattern when you hit REM sleep. Yeah, we, when we, you come out of it. Yeah, we've been able to track that for, for a few years now uh, with earlier forms, uh, earlier uh, types of Fitbits and the Apple Watch. Um, so I can see that being improved by being able to track being able to track uh, blood oxygen. Did it say? Yeah, yeah. With uh, with, with the electrocard diagram um, for optical heart rate. Yeah, I can see that becoming a thing. Caloric intake. Maybe and that, then that's that. that that that's a that's a pretty complex one. I'm not really sure how how that you, how they would track at that, that point. You're you have to inject something for that. Yeah, the go what well, the the go B three. So what what let's let's see if I can pull that up. What is that? Uh, go uh, personally, I think it's B3. it's kind of it's going to be useful in the future. But it's it's one of those technologies. Like, all right, are we ready? It's another thing too. So uh, let's see if I can. Uh, Health B go B three. That's what they say is, is, is going to be able to track caloric intake. Um, starting at one seventy, that's not bad. Only smart band in the world that tracks calorie intake and hydration level automatically. So hmm. they actually already have a product up and a site. So apparently you can order. You, you, you apparently can buy this right now on Amazon All right. for one hundred seventy bucks. Here's my credit card. D- hold on. We're doing Auto- a tech review. Automa- <laughs> Maybe we should live tech review. Well, right. no, uh, not live, but let us know in the comments if you want to do if you want to do a tech review on the main channel. We'll possibly do that. Uh, automatic c- calorie intake tracking, getting a better understanding of your energy balance. Manual calorie counting can be left behind. How does it work though? Um, yeah, it, it says what it does, but it doesn't say how. I, I mean, I, is I, there photos? I guess there's. Because I'm, I'm feeling it's it's a pad that goes onto your skin, but the issue is it's a watch. It's it's a smart watch. Yeah, but again, I'm not I'm not saying it's bad. But my one question is, I'm, if I'm ca- skeptical. How does this if you're work? counting calories? How are you going to count calories without getting into the actual bloodstream? Well, okay. So one thing that I do understand is that we do have data as far as the amount of grams per micro. Uh, per, uh, per per macronutrient, um, of of what the body is able to absorb. So I su- uh, unless hold on, I'm sorry, mm. sorry, unless they're using the heart. R- you know what? Never mind. Go on. No, 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 no. So there is data, like there 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 is factual data as as far as we do know how much your body, how much macronutrients your body is able to absorb within a certain amount of time. There's a limit to how much protein and carbs and fat your body can absorb within a certain amount of time. It can only absorb so many grams of each one, and that applies to every macronutrient that we that we have in our food. And we do already have, and we've had it for a while with just apps like uh, Under Armour's MyFitnessPal that uh, um, 
all nutrition facts are public. Um, so so if, 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 you, if you were to see the, the macronutrients of whatever food, of a burger or whatever, um, something can collect that data and apply it to what the human body is able to absorb and how it can slightly vary depending on your, uh, on your current, um, health situation, whether it be your BMI or your fat percentage or where you want to be in terms of your weight and your, and your age and how that'll affects it's, it's, it's a lot of math. So, but what, let's see what they say about how calorie tracking works when you eat food travels, to your stomach to be to be broken down and digested 10 to 15 minutes later your body starts converting the carbohydrates uh in your food into glucose sometimes it's fructose uh this process can continue uh continues for up to four to six hours depending on what you eat and your body's unique physiology so that varies depending on your sex and your age and your weight and your bmi right as glucose levels rise, your cells start to absorb it and, uh, and, and release water, fat, and protein in your food um, influence the rate of glucose absorption, leading to different shapes and durations of the, gluco- of the glucose curve measured by glucose. So they actually qu- quoted glucose curve. So it looks like they're uh, judging by how glucose works in the body. Uh, they also say G- uh, Gobi... Uh, uses bioelectrical impen- yeah, a bioelectrical impendent sensor to measure the fluid moving in and out of your skin cells continuously around the clock. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, that's because um with the heart rate and shit like that. Okay. Because bioelectrical is mostly with the heart. Well, it's not. It's not just heart rate. So, so they're talking about fl- fluid moving. About your skin cells, so yeah, that, that, right. that so yeah, that that's your, that, that's, your that's, bl- that's that's yeah, that's blood, that's plasma, and how your circulation is changing between things that you're doing and, th- and things that you're eating. Uh, the inbuilt heel B flow technology uses an advanced algorithm to analyze imp- uh, impedance data and calculate calorie intake based on your glucose curves, giving you a complete picture of your nutritional intake over time to understand. It will go be automatically tracks intake. Have a look at this infographic. So they also have an entire infographic on how it, on how it works. But basically, it's a combination. So yeah, you, you eat or drink something, food or beverages go through digestion and break down. N- nutrients get absorbed differently. Of course, like I said, there, now you know the body has different limits on on how many macronutrients it can take in a certain, in a certain amount of time. Quickly absorb carbohydrates cause a glucose jump longer absorbed proteins and fats change a glucose curve body cells absorb glucose and release water gobi's two sensor sends high and low frequency signals and reads your fluid movement through your skin Hmm. so so the fluid dynamics estimate the number of of consumed calories, the number of carbs, fat, and protein, so keeps track of your macronutrients as well, not just calories. Um, and you get your personal graph with the number of calories consumed within each day. Important note, based on different food processing rates, calorie calculation might take up to eight to 10 hours. So, it, so it'll give you a full report at the end of each day, in theory. It could take a little bit longer considering how much you might eat. And, but as long as you're wearing it, the idea is that it'll keep track of everything you're eating based on data it collects through fluid movement through your skin. Um, and it calculates the processes at which your body is able to absorb all these micronutrients and applies that to data. It also has already that you input about your weight and your BMI and your age and your sex and all those things that affect your caloric intake in your you know, um, all different all different things about your nutritional health. That's pretty cool, though. I think we should, I think we should get one and try to test it out. I mean, I may I could just get it myself. It's one hundred seventy bucks. Yeah. Uh, but me personally, uh, since I'm trying to lose the weight, I'll that'll be very useful for me. I think we should both test it out a week. You should try it out for a week. I I should try it out for a week. We come together, write up our review, and we, we'll put a video out, say next month or so. 
Right. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that, guys. Um, I'll be going on for a long time now. Uh, uh, it's, there's only like one more thing I want to talk about from C, from CES. <clears throat> Actually, two. Well, there's two more things, but one of them is kind of obvious. Um, Intel is putting out a folding laptop. Laptops already fold, I know, but it's a full screen. They're, they made a giant folding tablet. I don't care for it. They took the Samsung Galaxy Fold and made it really, really big, and Intel built it. Hey, um, hear me out. Yeah. Microsoft Edge. That's it. Ah, I get it. Edge. No, that's it. The browsing. What? No. You know, you know the Microsoft Edge is the... Browser? Yeah. No, the oh, internet sorry. browser. Uh, sorry, I meant what, what's your laptop? Oh, the Surface. So, there you go. It's I I always call it the Edge in my mind, but no, 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 no. It's, Mi- it's Microsoft the Surface. Microsoft Pro. Surface Pro. Hmm. Enough said. Because is what is it? Touch screen? It's a full touch screen. So like think think. No no no. I'm talking about your laptop. Yeah. Is it touch screen? Yes. What is your keyboard attached to it? It's detachable. Enough said. All right, we can end the podcast. Wait, hey, no, hold no, on, no, no, we're done. Hey, no, listen, this. You know go, what? This, I'm gonna be honest. This, this all goes back to the themes I said about seamless tech and everything becoming more be convenient. Honest. But this is also, uh, this Chris, is this is weird. Listen, Chris, I'm gonna be honest with you. Huh. I'm sick and tired of touchscreen. I mean, it's not. It's dude. Okay, I know. I'm not. I'm not. He, I'm not saying. John, listen. Here's the thing. Touch screens, it's either we get bigger screens that are collapsible or we have more screens. And that's the way it's going to be until we can come up with actual f- effective holographic projections that can be, you know, that can take over screens and, 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 and then everything can be AR. But until that happens, John, we're only going to get more and more screens. The screens are going to get bigger and more convenient be put everywhere. The next thing you know, you're going to have screens where you, where you never expect you're going to have, you're going to have, you're going to have, you're going to have an OLED panel on your shoe or in your tie or in your hat uh, or in your, uh, don't ask on your gaming console. Well, I mean, you're going to have an OLED panel on your gaming, um, controller for no reason. Actually there's dude, there's already, there NVIDIA. are there are graphics cards. There are PC graphics cards that have OLED panels in them. There's the screens are getting everywhere. It's like it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. They're falling. It's everywhere. They're falling everywhere. I'm tripping on TV. And, and, and look, they're 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 bending and they're flowing and it's just out of control. No, this it, the horseshoe bend reference design exploring a future for PCs. I don't know, man. It's, I don't give a shit. So, I don't, I don't, no, I just don't care. Just look at this. Look at oh, it. no. He turned it around. See I'm not I, supposed to do see, you see this. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. I'm not supposed to see this. Do, do, I don't care. Do you, but do you see what I mean? It's, I get it. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this right now. This is a technology that's not for me. I agree. It's not for me personally. Except, except we're going to buy one and we're going to do a review on it. I know. I'm going to hate it every moment. <laughs> You know we're gonna we're gonna run Chrome on it, and we're gonna run we're gonna attempt. What's wrong with you? We're gonna attempt to run Crisis on it, and then it'll never turn on again. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> it'll be blue screened because the blue will take up the entire thing because it's all a screen. Not anymore. It's not blue. It's an entire. Okay. It's magenta. It's a magenta screen. Actually, actually no. It's, I thought it's, it was a blue screen. It, it was a blue screen, but they just changed. I was like, instead of telling you what's wrong, it's like, all right, here's a reference code. Go fuck yourself. Oh. But yeah, it, it's it's a laptop. It, it's it's a big tablet. It's a big. It's a fucking tablet. I don't know about. I mean, it's, I'm gonna it's go just, right now. I'm gonna go to Apple Store right now. Buy their big, the big iPad, iMac, whatever it is. It's just it's a foldable and screen. And I'm gonna bend laptop. it. Foldable phones were the hottest, were one of the hottest topics in the tech world in 2019. Sure, uh, and in 2020, foldable laptops will swoop in and take some of that mojo. The driving force behind a larger trend in foldable laptops is coming from Intel's horseshoe bend reference design that was unveiled in CES. CNET has an exclusive deep dive with Intel on this new take on what a highly versatile and powerful computer of the future could look like. 
Horseshoe Bend is, is essentially a 17-inch tablet or an all-in-one computer. If you use a kickstand and attach a keyboard and mouse, it folds into it folds in half to become a 12.5 inch laptop with a touch screen on one half and a touch and a touch keyboard with touchpad on the other uh, there's also hardware there's also, there's also a hardware keyboard that can slide to the bottom of the touch screen for those who don't love virtual keyboards thank god <laughs> so it's a compelling design that wants to push PCs forward into 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 some new directions. Lenovo unveiled something similar last May, and Microsoft showed its dual screen concepts in October. Yeah, but the so if if you remember back in Techtober, uh, we talked about the new Surface line, right? And how Microsoft is putting out a phone mm-hmm. that's basically two screens. Yeah. Um. Which isn't bad. It's 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 like a phablet. This is a f- laptop. <laughs> this is a t- this is a tab top. A a tablet top. A t- a tabletop. It's a tabletop. <laughs> Coin oh. it hashtag tabletop right now. Hey, uh, Chris. Uh, listen to me. Uh, I will break the fucking laptop in half. Uh, oh God. But it folds. You and can't you're paying break it for in it. Half. But you can't break it in half if it's foldable, John. It's a flexible OLED. When there's a will, there's a way. Anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's uh, Because in one hand, it's a, it's a two-in-one. Okay, here, so here's the thing. This is a, this is, we're in the transitionary period. Everything is getting smaller. Um, I think it was Tim. I can't remember. I can't remember if it was Tim Cook or someone else that said this before at Apple, that the purpose of the iPad, rather the purpose, of, the purpose of the MacBook is to replace the iMac. The purpose of the of the iPad is to replace the MacBook. The purpose of the iPhone is to replace the iPad. And the purpose of the Apple Watch is to replace the iPhone. Everything is supposed to get smaller and more seamless. But at the same time, we're getting more and more screens. But this is a transition to where. Intel is kind of hopping on this idea that, and it says here before, they're supposed to re- they're supposed to revolutionize the future of PCs. That the the idea, and this is likely for the regular consumer, not for the gamer like you or me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not it's, saying it's, I'll it's use not. It it's not for the tech enthusiast that wants the biggest and mo- beautifully water cooled 128 core machine that can run. Th- that, that that can render a supernova no this is this is this is no this is to replace the consumer level computer that everything is is, is going to be more and more small and seamless and that if you want anything else that's higher demand it's going to be for the enthusiast like you or myself just like how we were saying before, how self-driving cars is likely going to be co- the common thing for you know regular commuters. It's going to be like the new form of public transportation. It's like you buy your own thing, and and if you want to have a, com- a combustion vehicle or a big truck or a sports car that's that you can drive yourself, that's going to be an enthusiast product or even a- an antique. You know, the other day I was walking into the store and they're like, "You need any help, sir?" And it was a young kid. I'm like, oh god, I'm, I'm old. Shut up, John. You're 20. I know. <laughs> oh my the god. guy working at there must have been 16. Exactly. Otherwise, he was. I'm five. I'm about to be five years older than that to kid. Be. Shut up, John. I'm about to be five years older. Anyway, the one last thing from CES I want to talk about is tech getting less techy and more subtle. Uh, this is another. There's another trend of, of, of the night idea of contacts. Come on, I want those. I, you want sights? Night vision contacts. I'm gonna show you a short film after this. Uh, but th- this is uh, this is part of the whole idea about tech becoming more seamless and how Google has been one to do this. That uh, the idea of tech looking less RGB gamer and standing out and and becoming more to blend. Don't look at me that look, John. I understand your struggle, but for the mom 
that wants I'm a not new saying anything about router RGB. Or listen, this. listen, listen. I'm not saying that, but we have a friend who has a whole rainbow as a la- as a computer. Um, and he's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I'm not on that train fully. I am. I want. Well, I, no, no. Personally, see, okay. I'm, well, it's expensive for me to convert. John, it. so here's the thing. Okay. You can either take the computer and have it blend in with the house. Or you can have the house blend in with the computer. John, I want an RGB house. Strip lights everywhere, like in Tron Legacy. Actually, actually you, we already can do that. Yeah, I know. The the Philips bulbs? Yeah, you can use Philips Hue or Yee lights. It's, it's actually not even that terribly expensive. I know, it's, it's fucking great. Yeah. Sorry, I'm losing my mind because I'm so tired. You can RGB the entire house, or you can do with it what this article is saying. The tech is getting less techy and more subtle. Uh, Mu, Mui, 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 <laughs> Mui Labs. Uh, smart display is is about tech blending rather than sticking out. The this, so this is what this is what I would say with like what Google is doing, is doing with their ecosystem and what a few other companies are doing. Like all your sense, uh, sentence in Mui Labs. Um, that they're making tech that blends in with the that blends in with the, tr- the traditional styles of a home, you know, nice hardwood and stone and all that, uh, you know, subtle things that can just blend in rather than having a bunch of wires connecting to it and having RGB lights and OLED panels. It looks like it's straight out of a Blade Runner movie. Anyway. Today's technology is flashy. It is in your face, and it's everywhere, and I love it so much. It's <laughs> it's difficult not to feel like technology is taking over our lives, that it embeds itself more and more places and things, wires penetrating every orifice. I, that's, not, that's not on the article I said that. Um, <laughs> don't look at me like that, John. I want the Blade Runner future. <laughs> I want the cyber truck and the RGB lights in the house. At this at this point we're run we're going to be running into the the dread universe. I want Tron Legacy universe. I, tr- Tron was even a universe. It was a computer. I see that's what that exactly VR is going to take over. We're going to have the Oasis and everything. No, but that was one a of VR. the trends in, of CES 2020 was technology becoming less of tr- Less obtrusive, more subtle, and blending into the environment in more natural ways. We saw three companies that can tell the story, Aldersense, Sentins, and Mui Labs. Aldersense and Sentins are doing something similar. Both use sound waves to create touch interfaces out of plain surfaces made of plastic, metal, wood, or other materials. This means the buttonless phone is is a not... Is a not closer than we. Th- okay, it's not closer than we think. Bad English, but this sound wave technology can can simply make the side of the, can make, simply make the side of the phone a virtual button. Pressing and holding one spot could activate a power button. Sliding your finger up and down the side can change the volume. Squeezing the phone can take a selfie. Running your index finger down the back of the phone could uh, can act like a scroll wheel. You get the idea. So the the idea is that uh, using sat. What are you doing? He, he, what, what's this come hither motion you're doing? Oh, you're you're practicing on your phone that doesn't have those features, and won't have it until 2021 or 2022. It'll never have it because I'll probably have the same fucking phone. You have to upgrade at some point, dude. No. You have to. I'm a downgrade. You know, dude. You have an iPhone. You literally have one of the worst. You know that they just stopped supporting the iPhone 5. Yeah. I have a 6. You got one more year left, John. <laughs> yeah. Chris. You have to upgrade eventually or, or else your phone will be obsolete and it will not support the latest iOS. Good. Anyway, the idea that these guys are rolling with is that um, is creating virtual buttons using uh using sound wave technology they actually actually just uh, showed it here on on a plank of wood just a plank of wood on on, on a on a wall um and and the idea is, is how this can replace buttons and how we can have a completely buttonless portless bezel-less 
a phone. You mean a piece of glass? Yes. Seamless tech, John. Seamless glass. Se- yes. Just like in uh, in Ad Astra. Oh, yeah. I actually did like those. Right? It's really cool, man. It's like, what the fuck, bro? It's the future. These sound wave buttons don't wear out as fast, and the interface is more integrated into the device's build. Manufacturers can also use haptic feedback to help you locate and interact with these virtual buttons. But beyond phones, both companies are also working to bring this technology to other to other surfaces, including steering wheels on cars, window panes, appliances, and much more. This is going to be appearing in phones during 2020, but but it's when it but it's when it starts making its way into other surfaces that it, its full potential could start to shine through. So we can easily see this thing co- coming into like who knows maybe maybe this will be maybe this is uh, something that'll uh, maybe take over or become part of Project Soli in the latest Pixel phones that Google is putting out, or this can be how um, uh, not only does uh, you know. Apple will get rid of that headphone jack, but they get rid of all the buttons on the phone. Why? Because fuck you. <laughs> no, it makes sense. It's yeah. not It's not tactile response. It's not traditional, but it's a cool idea that we can just have seamless things that are that can change by just the touch of our fingers. You know, just on, I don't know. On, I, I, I can see both sides. On one hand, tactile response is nice. On the other hand, it's maybe it's it, it can be cool to do other things. You know, my my family just recently upgraded to the new iPhone, the latest. Oh uh, yeah, the, the the eleven and eleven Pro. Yeah, uh, they're like, hey, how do you do this? I'm like, you're you're asking me. I have a six. Oh, it's the same phone. It's yeah, essentially. They, it's like, I mean, they they did change the OS a bit with how you navigate it, but uh, well, no, in terms of buttons and how to go home and shit like that. Yeah, they changed it. Yeah, they're like, how do you do this? I'm it's like, like, it's like a pill at the bottom. You swipe. They're like, hey, how do you do this? I'm like, it's not my phone. Yeah. On the bright side, they have, they have an iPhone, so they can literally ask anyone else with an iPhone that's not you, someone with an up-to-date iPhone, or at least that knows how to use an up-to-date iPhone like me. Guess what? I still use my audio jack. It's... John, I understand you're an audiophile, but um, <laughs> it, the time is limited. John, we ha- we got to talk about your issues, man. Um, Speaking of limited time. um, I'm a technology-phobe. Techno- technophobe uh could it be i don't I, know i don't know but i i i think that's it um we, we went over a lot today we, we went did over a lot this week and well uh, yeah because it's the first one of the, it, uh, the year uh, uh, first one of the decade man yeah and that's it we're done we don't have to do this until like uh 2021 2031 Tw- bet well i'm sorry stay tuned see you guys next time 2029 Tw- anyway um, See you guys in nine years. As always, links are in, <laughs> links are in the description for social media outlets. Check out um, our short, short film. film, Blood Brothers, uh, and definitely check out the Tony Hawk Foundation to possibly donate and support uh, Australia. Or if not, uh, there are actual websites that can direct you directly to the firefighters or wildlife of course. foundations. Of course. And... Uh, other than that, uh, I robots, believe... robots taking over. Have a fantastic day. Uh, hold on, before we go. Oh damn it! I was gonna close out on that. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, next week we're more likely gonna be doing a spoiler talk of The Witcher. Oh yeah, yeah. We we, we were gonna do that today, but yeah, we'll we'll, oh. we'll see we'll see that for for next week or so. Yeah. So next week we're gonna be doing a spoiler there, talk. Yeah, Anyways, there, yeah. There's a lot more that we're, that we're that we're gonna tackle next week. But yes, have a fantastic week. Bye. <sighs> Hijo puta madre.